Okay, we are all set. So um, I should introduce that this is, um, I kind of feel like I have a YouTube channel at this point. This is uh, Takes on Double Take, which is a dorky name that I named it, um, where I am trying to talk with all the pairs of artists that participated in Double Take, which was the show where um, I asked people to partner up, provided a 12 by 12 panel, and had artists collaborate however they chose to, kind of in secret, and then obviously the opening of the show um, is when the first time that the artists got to see their other pieces. So this is our second pair of Take on Double Take. So um, I would love it if you guys would briefly kind of introduce yourselves. Nathan, you want to go first? Just say hey and... and sure. I'm, I'm Nathan Westerman. Um, originally from Houston, Texas. I have a BFA in sculpture and painting and a MFA from the U of I um, in sculpture, where I met Catherine. We were studio mates. And um, currently I'm teaching at Urbana High School. I teach engineering and welding. Great, fantastic. Catherine, you want to give us a little background? Sure. Um, as Nathan said, we met in grad school in 2001, I believe. And um, we got our MFA about a year apart. Um, and uh, this is the longest place I've ever lived, Champaign-Urbana. So we moved around a lot as a kid. So actually, I, I would say I'm from here because I've lived here the longest. Um, and I teach uh, in the Unit 1 program at Allen Hall, ceramics, oh, okay. video editing, and drawing. Cool. Right. <laughs> so um, what, what we're going to do now is maybe I'm just going to go through kind of sample, just because the piece that you guys had in Double Take isn't essentially representative of the rest of your work. So I thought we would look at a few images from both of you um, and then see the collaboration in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and start to share my screen so we can see those. Okay, does everybody see that? Um, so Catherine, let's, uh, let's talk about this piece. Um, sure, so this is a series that I started a few years ago and um, um, this, uh, this series evolved from um, photographs that I was taking at the time and um, I had been experimenting with adding um, mason stains to porcelain clay and um, but when I first started I was um, layering the porcelain and rolling it out so it almost became like this um, um, panoramic of porcelain clay of rolled out slip and um, I wanted to um, uh, retain some of the um, the layered, the layering, and um, so it kind of evolved into these um, portals, as I call them, that were that were kind of framed within these um, wheel thrown frames, porcelain frames, um, and uh, it's kind of evolving from there now, where I think that this kind of technique is going to evolve out of the frame and into three dimensions. So that's where it's going. Okay. Um yeah, I, it, it's exquisite. I remember when you um, you won MTD Art for yeah. this one, and um, we had it uh, had one of the posters hanging up at work, and people were so fascinated about the medium. They just had no concept of what they were looking at. And when I told them it was porcelain, they were like, "What?" <laughs> so it's it's such a cool use of the medium. So this is an example. This obviously isn't the exact image you used, but you're saying you kind of pull from photographs. Yeah, and there, um, I mean, I know this specific place where that photograph was taken for that last piece, but I just can't find that photograph. Right. Um, but yes, something similar. And then here's, a, I guess, another one of the portals, right? Yep. And then an example of possibly a, an image that you based it on, because you can kind of see all the different uh -huh. uh, color choices you pulled out there. Is it, is it difficult to fire? We don't have to get into the real details, but is it difficult to fire it? Um, it, yes and no, um, the, the main difficulty is in drying it so that it all shrinks together and doesn't crack. Oh, gotcha. So you have to work really quickly. So once the concept is there and you've made all your colors, you have to work really quick, quickly so that each piece, um, kind of gets into, uh, like a drying together state where nothing's drier than another piece. So it can all shrink at the same rate. Because porcelain shrinks about 20%, so. All right, okay. 
Yeah. And then just a couple of other examples um, here also within kind of a framework. So this is similar technique, but not, uh, not in the portal format. Right. So is this outside also porcelain? Um, I believe that one is actually stoneware. Okay. So it's quite a bit thicker. Um, I can't remember, but I, I think that's stoneware, yeah. And then here's one more example. And that's the first piece where I decided I wasn't going to roll the porcelain out anymore and leave it um, layered to try to create um, the same, to try to create the landscape, the imagery. Okay. So then now uh, we'll take a look at Nathan's. Obviously you can even look at um, the, your background and see a couple examples of Nathan's suit. But Nathan, obviously this is what you are heavily known for, um, especially in this area, everybody, Everybody recognizes your pieces from a mile away. You want to kind of talk about these pieces a little bit? Yes. So um, I started making this work like maybe eight, ten years ago. And um, it was originally all, um, or it is all reclaimed materials, reclaimed plywood from past jobs. Worked at the Cranford Art Museum and Urban Outfitters. And all the wood that was going to the dumpster, I would collect and kept in a shed. Um, and then reclaimed paint um, from both of those jobs as well. And now I collect paint whenever I see it or if someone knows they're throwing out paint. So it's all reclaimed materials, mostly. Um, so then it being scrap materials, it, the circle lended itself. I could cut it out. I could cut out scrap, odd shape pieces. Um, it's, it's laminated plywood, the last, the top, is quarter inch plywood that I coat with paint, rip on the table saw into strips and reassemble in a composition. Um, so thinking concepts, um, I think about the seams are important to me where the things meet. Mm -hmm. I think about where something new and something old um, meet. I think about um, home maintenance or home repair when you replace something old, you try to make it match, maybe say siding on a home. Right. Um, you, can, you can never match where the old and the new meet. Um, so I think of, think of it kind of poetically like that. Um, Kelly, excuse me, Nathan, for a minute. Um, Cora's crying. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Brent, he's supposed to be home, but. Um, and you, you intentionally leave the, the nail holes, right? Yeah, I'm interested in piercing the surface. I mean, there's there's a little bit of history uh, of artists that have pierced the surface. Um, originally, I thought about filling those, and, and it's just become part of the composition, part of the rhythm, part of the process. Right. And then you've definitely done different color stories, because these are kind of a very dark uh, example, but then I, you've done these beautiful ones where it's almost all different tones of white, right? Almost just little subtle tones of white. Right. When I when I first started, I was using really awkward colors. I liked the um, they were a little random. Um, they were they're all past wall colors, so these right. colors exist somewhere on someone's wall or in a, is from a past exhibit or from a past display, and um, so I. I started with random uh, kind of awkward colors, pinks, kind of really fond of this kind of dirty pink. Uh, it's almost like dead grandma pink, uh, <laughs> dingy, dingy colors. And then it, it moved into more like a Lego um, composition or, or color palette rather, um, brighter colors. And even the movement in, in the way they're, the stagger of the lines, the stripes, I think you you can see some a little more calm and some more static, uh, some more static and some more kind of jarring almost. Jarring, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I th I think maybe that's a little bit of a um, you know from personal experiences and and um, what's going on in politics. I think definitely going to these black are representative of where right. we are politically right now. Right. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful, and I love I love when people are surprised sometimes by the thickness of them, you know, because I don't think sometimes when they see a, the front view they realize the depth and 
Um, and I love when you talk about the join still being there because the whole idea of old and new joining up and that shows that history shows that's just it's wonderful. So um, I thought this was interesting. I have never seen this before, but Catherine sent it. So obviously this is back from when you all met. So it makes sense since this is another collaboration between the two of you. So what's the story behind this image? Um, so uh, in grad school, I was doing a lot of um, installation, sound and video pieces that um, centered around the idea of like a trace, a human trace. Um, and so we actually um, opened a bar in our crypt space and, um, <laughs> and recorded it. And then um, the, the finished piece was a projection from above back on to the bar and the bar stools. And so that you could sit and behind this was a large mirror. So when you looked in the mirror, you could connect yourself to the imagery that was projected onto the bar top so wow but um just i just thought that this was fun because nathan would remember it and maybe yeah. <laughs> some funny stories about it oh yeah so we, i think we were both are both of us were doing much more video and sound and you know maybe typical of grad school work um and then i think both of us have make a little bit more quiet work now. Um, <laughs> so when so when I first reached out to you, Nathan, and I asked you to participate in this and said, did you have someone in mind that you wanted to work with, you um, immediately chose Catherine. So this is the final two pieces that came about for the Double Take show. So um, how did you all communicate? I'm very fascinated to know what you told each other and what you decided to go for and if there's any, what did you share as far as how to move forward on the pieces? Well, we, um, I think we both had busy schedules. I was in Washington DC for a conference in STEM. Um, and so we got, finally we got back and, or I got back and made a phone call, called Catherine and we both had the panels and I said, take a tape measure and put it at the top of the panel and pick three numbers. And I picked three numbers and she picked three numbers. And those were the numbers on the tape measure that we marked off on our panel. Okay. And that's it. That's all we did. That's so all we talked about. Just marks and the, okay, great. Well, there was a little <laughs> bit more. Did we? Was, yes. I said, do you want to talk about content? And, and we were both pretty adamant about not sharing too much. But the word machine came up, oh, which, okay. which I think of when I'm working and doing this style of work, I do think like a machine or I think, and I almost thought that was too easy for me. I thought Catherine might've been kind of throwing me one, but, um, <laughs> but, but I remember at the opening, she was like, oh yeah, I didn't use that at all. So, uh, <laughs> so, so wait, did you guys share colors at all? Because the colors are so no. lovely with each other. No. I'm fat. No. Everyone completely that night. So I shared this in the last one too. So many people like to assume what the sharing was from looking at it, and everyone completely assumed you guys shared a palette here, at no. least with these colors. So it's fascinating that that wasn't part of it. Wow. I was actually wanting more numbers, and Catherine. So, so are these kind of some of the numbers like here and here maybe? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I looked, I looked to dig up that piece of paper where I jotted down the numbers, the measurements, um, and, and I couldn't find it, but it's somewhere. I don't think I threw it away yet. Um, so um, as far as uh, your piece, Catherine, obviously this does not look similar to the pieces we just looked at. So what, what made you kind of go for this style versus um, something more typical that you would do? Um, well, I knew, uh, um, well, I couldn't work with clay. I, I had the disadvantage of only having a week to prepare this. So I knew I couldn't work with clay. And I knew that Nathan worked with house paint. And okay. I didn't have any house paint, but I knew where I could find a very cheap, well, free material with paint chips. And um, so I decided that I was going to work with paint chips just, I don't know, in some way I thought it would connect to Nathan's work. Um, 
but um, but sticking with a more landscape theme. Um, and then um, uh, letting the the names of the paint chips show. I love that. Um, and um, yeah, the photograph that I chose, in some ways it just happened to share some um, some numbers that seem to match up with the photograph. Um, and I just, I thought it worked. Um, also the graffiti, I was really drawn to the graffiti and um, and how challenging that would be to recreate with paint chips. <laughs> right, right. And even, I mean, I love the fact that, um, I mean, I was, it's kind of almost patchwork and rigid over here and then it gets much more organic. But the, the I can't remember some of these now, but it was very enjoyable to read the actual paint colors. You know, because that, that's uh -huh. all fascinating to me is what the what they chose to call the different paint colors, and some of them really kind of fit and made a lot of sense for the whole piece. So, um, okay, so let's. Uh, this is kind of you. It kind of gave me this image just because you were you were working off this I off the telephone pole aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Just that image was just um, another uh, sample of a photograph that I might take and then be inspired to create a piece. Um, so. And then Nathan, this is your piece, um, which is um, similar to your work and the fact of the kind of the stripes and the circles, but what was your thought process behind this one? Well, um, machine, again, right. um, even though it was really not, but that, like I said, that's sort of something that's always there. Um, so I took the numbers and from there I, I, use, I use different tape thicknesses. Um, so I, I have the house paint and I created, uh, I put the lines and I, I made the stripes with the house paint, or I'm sorry, I made the stripes with the tape and I put a layer of paint down. And then where I pulled off the tape, the, the thickness of the tape was the registration for the next line. Okay. So, it was, it, so it was gonna, it's a system I use to determine the stripes. So I, I come up with, um, so this is something typical I do when I do, when I paint stripes is I mark off, I come up with numbers. I think of the numbers I like, I mark them and then I mask off the, the surface and then paint, put down paint and then pull up the tape and then use a different thickness oh, and line okay. up off of that edge. And so it just builds off of itself. So it, it's a system that kind of feels well, at that point, I, I somewhat stopped making choices, and it's um, relying on what thickness of paint uh, tape I use, All right. and, and it keep it keeps informing itself. So um, I did that, and I wanted to go with a lighter palette, and then I knew I was going to do a grid of circles over it, and um, I wanted to use the number three. Three was um, important to me um, for everything it represents. And uh, so I masked off and then I used an X-Acto knife and cut through the tape. And I, I originally cut smaller circles and painted. Um, the center circle actually is orange underneath that, um, that paint. I wanted a little bit to show through. I wanted a little bit of that dinge. A little, uh, for it to feel a little bit dingy, a little bit um, like I don't, you can see the cuts in the paint. Like um, here? And then, yes. And then I, and then I put a clear coat so that you, you get the kind of latent image. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so and, there, and then you just went for a pale palette, you said. So these were house paints you had around and you wanted to go for kind of a, a lighter palette on this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because so I, 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 I'm fascinated with how well they, how well they work together, as far as just the you know blue tones coming in and then this, these yellows working together. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. so it's so great how wonderful they are. I and then now I don't know I why I didn't think about it till now, but of course that's why you chose paint chips because you were thinking of Nathan and, and uh -huh. they use house paint. I I just thought it was such a great concept to use paint chips. I didn't really realize oh the course you're connecting it with Nathan's work so that's the stuff that I love because I know a lot of people who did this 
they not only shared, you know, whether it was a number and a marking, but they tried to think of that person as they were making it. And I really thought that was neat to see what, how it changed their work because they were thinking of the other artists. It's, it's, it was, it's wonderful. And I, I just think it's an amazing pairing for sure. Um, were you, were you both pretty happy with how the other verses turned out or how they came together? Oh yeah. Yes, definitely. It, it was, it was a really fun opening night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did I did love I think everyone was really good. I, I, I don't think anybody cheated and showed anything. I mean ever obviously people shared different things as far as a starting point, but it was so fun to see people um show up that night and get to rush over to see the other pieces side by side. Yeah. So we're hoping to definitely it, this went very well. Obviously, you know, as you guys mentioned, it was limited time because it was just something I really wanted to do, and I'm glad we did do it then because obviously things have currently changed. But um, uh, it is something. It went so successfully. It's something I definitely we're going to do again because it was so it was so great to see what people came up with. So, um, well, is there anything else you all want to add about these pieces or your other work at all? Um, well, I'm sure Nathan and I uh, are both looking forward to more studio time once our toddlers become school-age <laughs> children. <laughs> um, but it was really fun, so. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate both of you. Um, it was great. I'm, I'm well, glad I was a part of it. I really appreciate it because, uh, you know, it kind of came out of left field. And like you said, you are both got very busy situations. So the fact that you took the time to collaborate and create these two amazing pieces. Um, I, I was absolutely thrilled. So I very much appreciate that. So, and then I appreciate you giving time today to talk about it so that people can learn more about it. Cause that's what we came away with that night after the opening is that people so wanted to know what the artists said to each other. And they assumed mm -hmm. that almost 90% of the time they were wrong, but I love that. I love that. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. So anyway, thank you all so much. And I hope, uh, yeah, I hope next time we can, you know, maybe not do this over Zoom, but we'll see. But I appreciate this anyway. At least it it gets uh, gets the get the art out there some way or another. So thank you both, and and I hope I see you both soon. Yeah, stay you, safe. Kelly. Thank you. Bye.